All right, what is going on, Laker fans? Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, getting ready here to uh, preview the Lakers and the Denver Nuggets for Game 2. So I appreciate you guys being a part of the show. Just a quick reminder, if you guys have yet to subscribe here on uh, our ESPN LA YouTube page, definitely check it out. Definitely do it. Got all our shows doing things on the channel all day long, live streaming all day long. Uh, Berg is throwing up uh, content around the Dodgers. So please uh, make sure to subscribe. Okay, a couple things here. Uh, because today is a Monday and the Lakers got game two tonight, I'm going to spend a little time of just looking back at game one and then, you know, obviously tying things up to game two. Um, yeah, the, the script looked the same. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I really didn't see all that much different in game one against the Denver Nuggets than any of the other regular season games that the Lakers played against Denver or last year when the Lakers got swept by the Denver Nuggets. So, not a good start for the Lakers. Certainly not a good trend. I mean, it was great when they went up 12. Um, but look how fast and how quick Denver can erase that lead. And then all of a sudden, you're climbing uphill. I thought that part was a little demoralizing for the Lakers. I do think there's a couple big stories that come out of the first game. And it's impossible to not talk about the first game without bringing up D'Angelo Russell. So, you know, it's interesting. I like that he was aggressive. I like that, you know, he didn't care about the moment. And he was going to fire it up. Um, but you got to hit your shots. You can't go one of nine from the three-point line and you're D'Angelo Russell. You can't go six of 20 from the field, take more shots than LeBron James, and uh, only end up with 13 points. It's just, it, it, there's no path for the Lakers to hang with the Denver Nuggets if D'Angelo Russell has a night like that. Now, the good thing is, is, Okay, maybe he just had an off night. I mean, let's all be honest with each other. I think everybody can... can. It's very fair to say. D'Lo's been really, really good over these last three months. The problem is we're all waiting for this playoff time. We're all wait, waiting for this matchup specifically against Denver because of what happened last year in the playoffs when the Lakers played the Denver Nuggets is D'Lo was just a non-factor. So tonight, <clears throat> I hope he's taking his shots. I hope he's aggressive. I hope he's taking good shots. But they got to fall. You know, there is no, there is no, uh, oh, well, I'll get him in game three. You already, It already happened already in game one. And I've said this before. If the Lakers fall 0-2 in this series, you're not winning four out of five games against the Denver Nuggets. At least I don't believe so. So that's why tonight's game is going to be so critical. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's the first piece. It's on D'Lo. Go ahead and fire away. One other thing I'll say about D'Angelo Russell is... Find other ways to contribute if your shot's not falling. Don't keep relying on the three. Don't jack up 20 shots if it's not falling. Still get your assist up. Still get your rebounds up. There's other ways you can contribute. So I don't want him just to contribute just in that regard. Okay, that's the D-Lo piece that's coming into tonight's game. I want to go back a little bit to the psyche of the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, if we're all being honest, and it, it, the Lakers are certainly human, it is impossible to not have doubt throughout that entire organization about um, the Lakers beating the Denver Nuggets because it just seems like the script looks exactly the same as it, as it always has. When Denver wants to pour it on, when Denver wants to crank it up, when things get tough for the Denver Nuggets, they actually get smarter, they lock down better, they execute better. I feel like for the Lakers, they're a little all over the place. There was a stretch for the Lakers. I thought the end of the second quarter was brutal for the Lake Show, only to add a three-point lead, and that's after Braun hit a 30-footer or whatever that was. Um, and then the start of the third quarter, really the entire third quarter, they got outscored by 14 points. Should have been probably more. I think, <clears throat> who is it that hit a, I want to say Torian Prince hit a corner three that cut it down to 11, but it, it should have been even more than that. Third quarter, Denver methodically took out the Lakers, and I thought the Lake Show, not enough execution on their offensive sets, not enough play calling from Darvin Ham, not enough of the fingerprints of Darvin Ham in, uh, in that game one, but I know a lot of people are not confident about that to begin with, so there's a, a lot for the Lakers to do in this game too. I will say this, the original story was just get one of these first two games. Still got a chance to do that, so as best as you can, Wipe away what happened in game one. Hope, obviously, that uh, 
Um, some of these Laker players catch fire. You need more from D'Lo. You need more from Rui. You need more from Austin Reeves. You need more from Spencer Dinwiddie. If the Lakers got a chance to win these series or win this just a game it, it, this coming up uh, later tonight, if they got a shot, it's got to be because their role players were better or as good as the role players from the Denver Nuggets, and that was not the case in game one. Uh, so keep that one in mind. Last quick thing that I'll mention here, some interesting news came out from uh, Sham Sharania, the Athletic, that Christian Wood could potentially be coming back for the Lakers um, in Game 3 back in L.A. on Thursday. So for what that's worth, I think that's tough to kind of predict right now and to talk about just simply because he's been gone for so long. So until he comes back, let's wait to see. But anytime you can get an extra body, you take it. And I'm sure for the Lakers... Um, they would love to have him out there and love to have him help out in any way possible. Okay, game two coming up tonight. So make sure you hang out with us all day. And then uh, pregame show is going to start at 5.30. Tip-off's going to be at 7. Uh, thank you for uh, hanging out here. and Please subscribe on our ESPN LA YouTube page. Thank you, Lake fans. Appreciate it. Have a good uh, rest of your day.